The purpose of these lessons is to show you the logic behind the most basic Chinese characters, beginning with the simplest pictograms and later combining these elements to create more complex characters. If you haven't watched lesson 1, I would recommend that you do so. Keep in mind that these are not conversation lessons. I am merely arranging Chinese characters into groups with a common component so that they are easier to memorize in case you are trying to learn this language. And, by knowing the origin of a character, it's often very helpful in understanding its various connotations today. Today's lesson is five characters related to the human eye. The first is the basic pictogram for the eye, originally horizontal, but later turned upright in most characters related to vision and seeing. This character is pronounced fourth tone, mu, mu. But it's not the everyday word for I. Rather, it's used in fixed idioms from literature, because, as mentioned before, single characters have numerous homonyms, and, as such, are not easily understood in colloquial speech. However, we can now create one expression, mu di, mu di, using the second pronunciation of unstressed d. This is the Chinese word for goal or purpose, the bullseye like target that we saw in lesson 3. Probably the most common character with this radical is an ideogram of a hand above an eye. pronounced fourth tone, kan, kan. It means to look or see. When pronounced first tone, kan, kan, it means to watch, look after, or guard something. Obviously, this is another split sound character. Because of our limited vocabulary in these first few lessons, today's examples are all fourth tone, kan. The general verb to read is rendered as kan shu, kan shu, unless you specify what you're reading, a novel, a magazine, or a message on your cell phone. Next is an example of a sentence with a topic plus a comment. Shu shi bai kan de. Shu shi bai kan de. Reading was, is, or will be a waste of time, the tense depending on the situation. Notice the shi de pattern for emphasis and the extended meaning of empty or in vain for the character bai. Bai with a verb indicates that it was an empty, useless, wasted effort. Another expression is kan shang, kan shang, meaning to settle or decide on an item or take a fancy to a person or thing. The idea is that our gaze, our eye, falls on something and stays there. Kan also means to look at or consider a person or a possible outcome. So here is my imaginary conversation. Should everyone get married? Hmm, depends on the person. Kan ren. Some people want to get married and have a family. Some don't. Each person has to carefully consider his or her particular situation and personality. So, it depends on the person. Kan ren. Our next sentence uses the shi de pattern again, along with cai, meaning potentially, not yet, not until in English. Fu ren shi zao shang cai kan de. Madam didn't read your message until this morning. You thought she read it immediately after you'd sent it, but no, she apparently was preoccupied with other things at the time. Fu ren shi zao shang cai kan de. We assume zao shang means this morning here, so this sentence would be construed as pastime. The third character in today's lesson is the pictogram for tree, mu, coupled with the pictogram for eye, mu.
pronounced either first tone, xiang, xiang, or fourth tone, xiang, xiang, depending on the meaning. It's another split sound character. The original idea seems to have been to inspect trees to determine the quality of their wood and to survey the surrounding area to see if it was suitable for cultivation. Either way, fourth tone xiang refers to the appearance of whom or what is being inspected or surveyed. An easy example is telling a person's fortune by reading his or her palm. In Chinese, kan shou xiang, kan shou xiang, which directly translates as read hand appearance. The other pronunciation for this character, first tone, xiang, is limited to the idea of reciprocal action, each other, mutually. In his book, Chinese Characters, published in 1915, Dr. L. Viger suggests that this abstract meaning of reciprocity is thought to be a Chinese pun. Two characters with identical pronunciations, mu and mu, arranged face to face. Whether true or not, it's an easy way to remember the meaning of mutual interaction. With this in mind, our next example sounds like a snippet from a novel. Liang ren xiang kan. Liang ren xiang kan. The two friends looked at each other. The fourth character in this lesson is an eye looking directly at an object to determine whether it's truly straight or not. It's pronounced second tone, zhi, zhi. To ensure accuracy, a final L-shaped ruler, or square, was added to the mix. This L shape is usually reduced to a simple horizontal stroke, rendering the I reticle unrecognizable. But you will often see the original L square when this character enters into combination with other elements. Here I have shown you both versions of the same character. The vertical line of sight above the eye gained a dot and eventually a horizontal stroke to become the phonetic element shi that we learned before as number 10. Zheng zhi, zheng zhi is a combination meaning integrity. So zheng zhi de ren describes an upright, honest individual. When combined with the number one, yi, we have the adverbial phrase yi zhi, yi zhi, meaning continually, constantly, non-stop. So yi zhi kan, yi zhi kan, would be translated as keeping your eyes fixed on something, constantly looking at or watching it. Our final ideogram is another split sound character composed of sheng to produce, grow or give birth, above the pictogram for I. Both are third tone. Pronounced either sheng, sheng, or xing, xing, depending on the meaning. Sheng originally was an old medical term for cataracts, literally a growth over the eye. And since cataracts lead to diminished or reduced eyesight, the modern meaning of sheng is to reduce, eliminate, or simply save as in English, save time, reducing the time spent. Sheng shi, sheng shi. Poor eyesight also means you need to squint your eyes and look closely to see anything clearly. So the second pronunciation, 
Xing means to examine, especially one's conscience. In ancient China, the royal palace was off limits to the public. To be allowed entry, one was naturally subject to careful scrutiny. In other words, sheng or xing, meaning to examine closely. The agency within the palace responsible for scrutinizing any and all arrivals was also called sheng. Later this term was applied to any administrative agency or region under its control, giving us the modern word for province. Even in English we can say, this matter is outside my province, meaning outside my area of expertise or control. At first glance, these definitions may not seem related, but on taking a closer look, the sense development is quite logical. Follow the progression in meaning of sheng. That's why I feel it's important to learn the origin of a character, if at all possible. Seemingly unrelated connotations often fall right into place once they are explained. Anyway, for this extended idea of province, the phrase ben sheng, ben sheng is often found in news reports referring to the province where a person is currently residing. And a person born and raised in that province would naturally be referred to as ben sheng ren, ben sheng ren. Here is our color chart with today's seven characters and their correct stroke order. Mu. Kan. Xiang. Zhi. And Sheng. The following chart shows how these characters would appear in printed form. To fix the characters in your memory, copy them onto colored sheets of paper. Circle any split sound characters and underline those having the same tone and pronunciation. When memorizing homonyms, it helps to invent an oddball phrase to link them in some way. For example, in today's lesson, tree mu and I mu are underlined as having the same pronunciation. So you could create a silly image in your mind's eye. A tree growing not fruit, but enormous eyeballs. If the image is crazy enough, it will stick in your memory for a long time which is, of course, the purpose of any mnemonic device. Psychologists know that the human brain recalls bizarre scenarios far more easily than logical ones. It's a memory trick that works, especially if you create the image yourself and not simply copy my suggestion. After all, it's your brain, and you will recall your image before mine. By the way, can you still recall the tricks you used for the homonyms toe and stop in lesson 6, time and 10 in lesson 7. Review the color sheets regularly along with your memory tricks. So, what have we learned in today's lesson? 1. The original oracle bone character for the human eye was horizontal, but usually appears in vertical position today. It's not the common word for I in everyday speech. 2. We now have the Chinese version of the bullseye meaning goal or purpose. Mu Di. 3. 
to look or see is kan, a split sound character also pronounced kan when it means to guard. 4. Kan shu, called a verb object compound, changes the meaning from simply look at to read. 5. The use of by with a verb indicates useless, empty effort. 6. When our eyes fall on a thing or a person we like, Chinese uses kan shang to express this. 7. Kan can also mean to take into consideration, look at something from a certain perspective. 8. The combination of tree with I is the split sound character xiang, meaning to examine the appearance of something, such as a hand when palm reading. Kan shou xiang. 9. It's been suggested that the tree plus I character pronounced first tone xiang might be a play on words, since both elements have the sound mu and mean each other. Xiang kan. 10. The character for perpendicular or straight is zhi, which may or may not include an L square. 11. To express the idea of non-stop or constantly, the phrase yi zhi is used. 12. An old character for cataracts is an ideogram depicting a growth over the eye, pronounced sheng. To diminish or reduce one's eyesight is extended to mean reduce or cut down on something, such as when we save time, money, or energy. Sheng shi is to save time. 13. Cataracts and poor eyesight lead to squinting to see clearly, so the other definition of sheng sometimes pronounced xing, is to examine carefully, to scrutinize. 14. For the safety of the emperor, any visitor to the royal palace had to be scrutinized closely. This duty fell to a specialized agency, also called sheng. Eventually, this usage was applied to other agencies in the palace and the areas they controlled. This is the historical origin of sheng, province in Chinese. 15. Anyone born and raised in a specific province is referred to as Bensheng Ren. Now you will find a short quiz on double, triple character, and longer expressions. Answer using only the characters learned so far. Thank you for watching.